Hi everybody, welcome back to the Retro Ghetto. I've got yet another pickups video and uh, it's a good one. Okay, so the pile around me has grown sufficiently to the point that I need to do another pickups video so I can get this stuff filmed and put away. I'm not going to show you guys everything I've bought since the last pickups video because I've had a lot of charity shop finds, a lot of filler, a lot of things that are going straight to CEX that can contribute towards my full set goal. Um, you know, I don't want to be spending my hard earned money on any more barber games, so I've been utilising CEX vouchers for that. So a lot of that stuff will be going straight there. But I've got some really, really nice additions to the Retro Ghetto. Some things I've been after for a long time. Some really nice retro pieces. As you'll have seen in the title and probably the thumbnail, I've bought the most expensive video game I've ever bought. So we'll get to that. So yeah, let's get into it. Retro Ghetto. Okay, so you guys know that I always like to start off with bits and bobs, the weird and the wonderful, before I get into the main part of the video, which obviously is the video games. I bought a few vinyl purchases this week. I'm thinking about doing a little bonus video at some point of my vinyl music collection. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you would like to see. Whilst as much as we all enjoy games, I feel like music really is like a gateway into somebody's soul, right? For the most part, people know what a good game and a bad game is, but music is so subjective, isn't it? And I think it really does show you a lot about someone's character, the sort of the music and the genres that they enjoy listening to. But anyway, I've had a few pickups. Um, the first one was actually a charity shop find, but it's a find that I'm very happy to have found. Uh, and that is Rolls Royce Greatest Hits. I am an old soul at heart. So if you know, you know, you know. Uh, I mean, the first three songs on this album alone are Love Don't Live Here Anymore, Wishing On A Star, and I Want To Get Next To You. So yeah, if you don't know, you're missing out. Um, this next one, I recently, just yesterday actually, went to um, Entertainment World. I've previously done a video there, so if you're new to that store, if you've never been, make sure you check out my video of Entertainment World. And they've got a large selection of vinyl and a large selection of hip-hop vinyl in there as well. And I was fortunate enough to pick up um, the LOX, LOX, their first album. So you've got one of the goats there, Jada Kiss, and a uh, friend of the channel, Styles P. What up, what up, what up? You know it is SP the Ghost LOX D Block. I'm here to tell you to tell everyone. I'm telling everyone and telling you to tell everyone. Subscribe to the Retro Ghetto. You heard me? Subscribe to the Retro Ghetto for the best content in retro video games and collecting on YouTube. Period. Thank you, Styles. And the last one that I wanted to show off is a vinyl that I've been after for a long time. This has been on my saved eBay searches for such a long time, but I've never seen it for less than £100. So one finally came up at a good price. This is one of my favourite movies of all time. It's the official soundtrack. It's from 1995, and that is Friday. Damn! And this is pretty much my childhood here, watching this. Um, again, if you haven't seen this film, make sure you do. It's a real sort of like coming of age tale, I think. I think I was at the right age when uh, I discovered this film, you know, getting into uh, all kinds of different shenanigans. But yeah, love this film, amazing soundtrack, and uh, yeah, nothing really much more to say about that. Okay, so if you've been watching the channel, you will have seen that recently I found a load of VHS in a bin, right? Crazy, but yeah. Um, I'm not going to show all of those videos, I'm not going to show any of those videos actually. If you want to see the video, go and check it out. But I actually had a second bin find of VHS. Uh, this time the people in the charity shop were aware of it. They said, look, I've just popped it behind the bins for you. Go and help yourself. So uh, it was still a bin find, even if it was a pre-arranged bin find. But uh, all I've done is I've just taken a few out of the bag just so I can show you guys just the highlights really of what was in there. As I say, I'm not going to go through all the, uh, the rubbish old stuff. But uh, yeah, some of the highlights of that box were the Star Wars trilogy. Toy Story, I love me some Toy Story, Jumanji, R.I.P, and Harrison Ford's Blade Runner. So yeah, these are just some of the highlights that I had, again it was another box full. I'd like to put a question out there though to you guys that know a bit more about VHS than myself. Unfortunately in this lot, some of it did have the old mould on the actual um, tape itself. It's very very common, so make sure you're checking out for that before you buy VHS. 
Is there any, any way that I can get it off? Because some of these, some really nice videos um, in this box. But um, as I said, I've just got a little specks of white mold on the tape that you can see inside the cassette. So let me know in the comments if there is a way to get it off or should I just bin it? Okay, and whilst we're talking about movies, just a couple of Blu-rays that I picked up. I don't usually show my Blu-rays, but when it's things like this, I like to get them out there to you guys. Firstly, Clash of the Titans and Wrath of the Titans, a two-pack on Blu-ray in this nice set with the sleeve on it. Um, I'm a massive Greek mythology fan. As much as the original Clash of the Titans is a far superior film, I still enjoy these films for what they are. And I found this in a charity shop for 50 pence. So, I mean, I weren't going to leave it there for 50p, right? And this next film was actually recommended to me by a friend. Shout out to you, Big Steph. And it's unbelievable. I'd put it in my top 20 films of all time. And when it comes to films, I'm a harsh critic, let me tell you. You'll have seen with my scores with uh, my Games Completed video. I'm probably a lot more generous with video games than I am with films. I really uh, am very harsh on films, to be honest, and it takes a lot to impress me. This was unlike any film I've ever seen before. Um, I'm not a huge anime fan by any means, but don't let that put you off if you want either, because this film is, is phenomenal. And also, it's probably the saddest film I've ever watched in my life, but don't let that put you off either, because it's a real journey. And that is Grave of the Fireflies. There's probably people that are sitting there at home that have watched this going, oof, because yeah, it's one of them. If you know, you know. Um, I've thought about this film pretty much every day since I watched it, genuinely. It's uh, unlike any film I've ever seen before, as I say. Very, very powerful film. And uh, yeah, little sets ago. There'll be no spoilers here, but if you haven't, go and check out this film and uh, let me know if you think it's as good as I say it is. Okay, so just a couple more bits now before we get into the games and this is something I was so happy to find because it'd been on my save searches for about two years on eBay. It always sells for sort of around £50-55 and that's more than I want to spend on what is a book. And that is the Undisputed Street Fighter Anthology. This is a work of art, guys. You can see it's been die cut here to be like the arcade machine. Inside here as well, there's like an origami arcade machine that you can put together. If you're a fan of Street Fighter, you need this. This is everything Street Fighter in one place. Um, as you'll probably see now from the footage that I'm going to put up, it's not just about the game. In here, there's the action figures, cosplayers, professional players of the game, um, uh, the actors, the backstory, voice acting, anything and everything you can imagine that is associated with Street Fighter is in this book. And you can probably see it on the back look. This was RRP in at $99. So that's why it's been so expensive and it's been so long that it's been sat on my searches without me pulling the trigger. One came available for £10 opening bid or best offer. I offered £15. You know when you used to make a cheeky bid, right? You don't really think it's going to get accepted, but they might come back with a, a counter offer. It was accepted and it was here the next day. Brand new, sealed, the lot. So yeah, a, an absolute bargain. I'm very, very happy to add this to the shelves in the retro go. Okay, so just a couple of toys to show you now, and uh, I'm not going to spend too long talking about these because I already showed off my 50 inch. <laughs> I mean, that sentence alone, right? That was a comma, not a full stop. 50 inch, wow. Um, 20 inch, should I say. My 20 inch World of Nintendo Mario figure. Um, I've already got, yep, he's in arm's reach just about. I already had the flower power one. Um, you'll have already seen this if you watched my tour of GameSmart. If you haven't, go and check that video out. It was nice to add this to the collection. And one more toy that I purchased since the last video, and this really serves as more of a, a warning to you out there and uh, shows my idiocy more than anything else. You guys will know I'm a massive uh, Disney's Hercules fan. We've already spoke about my love for Greek mythology. I've been collecting the Hercules action figures and uh, I've been after a Pegasus. Um, now I remember as a child having a Pegasus that I could put Hercules on and just, it's going to make for a nice display once the Retro Ghetto 3.0 happens. I'm not going to talk about 3.0 anymore, right? Just, we're going to get to that another day. But then it turned up, look at it, it's tiny, right? <laughs> it looks like a cake topper. It's completely my fault, not the eBay seller, a bit like picture number nine or whatever. There was like a ruler next to it, so I should have done my homework before I bought it. But uh, yeah. My Hercules figure is definitely not going to fit on this, so... And to be fair, Little Man will get it for Christmas. Okay, who's ready for some games? 
Um, there's lots of piles around me. I don't really know what the best place to start is. I'll tell you what, I'm going to start with this one because there's only one. That's my PlayStation 1 purchase. Um, this was a charity shop find. Siphon filter. Nice to see black box, half decent PlayStation 1 titles in a charity shop. It's actually in the system. And um, yeah, this is nice, complete. Comes with the original sticker and everything, which is always nice with these games. No cracks or anything like that. So yeah, really happy to have added that for, I think it was like £1.50. And then on my lap now is but a large pile of PlayStation 2 games. I found a lot of PlayStation 2 games in the last few weeks that I didn't have. Uh, mostly at charity shops, but there are a couple here that I found in a bit of a hidden gem of a shop, really. Uh, I didn't know it existed. It's sort of like a crack converters. It's like a pawn shop, but not a crack converters, so you wouldn't expect it to be video games. But when you go in, like half of the shop is video games and things of that nature. So, yeah, and there's a couple of bargains in there as well. First one I picked up from there was this Grand Theft Auto double pack. This is something I've been after for quite a while. And it's in really nice condition. Usually the spine on these, with it being cardboard, is all sort of creased and not in the best condition but obviously there's a lot of talk about this series at the moment with the remasters coming out so hopefully um they'll have done a good job with that but yeah i don't own i don't know if i own any actually um any special editions for the playstation 2 any big box stuff or things with sleeves so yeah it was nice to add this to the collection and whilst i was in there i also picked up outrun 2006 um i've had a bit of a play on this actually um when i picked it up it's not as good as the original Outrun games, you won't be surprised to hear. I think this came out on the PSP, that's the sort of the one that you generally see a lot of in charity shops. And yeah, it's not amazing, but there's definitely fun to be had with this one. Um, I think the original Xbox version of this has become quite expensive. This is not a particularly cheap game. Um, I think it's about 15 quid in CEX, but I think he gave me both of these and one other random PS3 game that we'll get to for £13, so not bad deal at all. And uh, as I say, yeah, I've got a large pile of PS2 in front of me, so I'm not going to spend too much time with these. Probably some of the highlights, because these are all charity shop finds. Um, Terminator 3, Rise of the Machine. A couple of Need for Speed games, which I think completes my Need for Speed PlayStation 2 set. Max Payne 2, got memories of playing this one as a kid. And the rest is just all sort of filler, really. Um, this was sort of mostly a job lot at a charity shop and I think whoever bought it in was a fan of the racing genre. Okay so we're going to do some Nintendo Wii now. Again I found quite a lot of Nintendo Wii over the last few weeks but again it's all going to CEX including Wii Sports. I found a couple of versions of these. You find these you pick them up right. CEX still give good money for Wii Sports so grab these when you see them. Um, but just a few more charity shop finds was Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Uh, this was actually from CEX, Ready to Rumble Revolution. I like the Ready to Rumble series. I remember playing it on Dreamcast and uh, I think the PlayStation. So yeah, I've never played this version, not heard much about it, not expecting it to be uh, a game of the year or anything, but for a couple of quid, I thought I'd give it a, sh a shot. And this was a charity shop find. I thought I'd show it, because it's going to CEX. But the fact that they give half decent money for it, and that is Avatar Into the Inferno. Um, this actually sells for a little bit of money at CX, nothing too special, but it's worth picking up if you see it in a charity shop. But yeah, thought I'd show you guys. I have actually ordered what I consider to be a bit of a grail Nintendo Wii game through CEX. The only issue is I ordered it about a day or so ago, and I've not had that confirmation email. So yeah, I'm not holding my breath that it's going to come, but hopefully in my next pickups video I'll be able to show you that. If only somebody had made a video telling CEX how to improve. Okay, so next we've got PlayStation 3, and before we get into the games, I uh, managed to get a couple of peripherals for the system. Found a controller in a charity shop, always worth picking these up. Um, I actually needed a PlayStation 3 controller, because I've just been using uh, my God of War ones. And to be honest, these are more on display than for use. Um, so yeah, it's nice to just have a standard black one. But if you ever see these, make sure you pick them up, guys. I think CX has given approximately £14 trading um, for a standard uh, official PS3 controller. And another thing that I found in the charity shop was this. This is the Thrustmaster, uh, the wheel and the pedals. I've not had a chance to do anything with this yet. I originally thought it was PlayStation 3, but it might actually be PlayStation 4. Uh, for those that are interested, this is the Thrustmaster T80 racing wheel. Can't give you any sort of review, because as I say, guys, I've not even tested to see if it works. But yeah, I found this in a charity shop and um, thought I'd bring it home. Okay, so my PlayStation 3 games, um, as I aforementioned, I got those couple of PlayStation 2 games from that 
sort of uh, pawnbrokers, if you like, and I said they threw one of the game. And this is a game that caught my radar a couple of weeks back. I just never pulled the trigger on it because it's one of them games that's cheap. And if you buy it online, the postage is about the same price as the game. But that's Supremacy MMA. I'm a big MMA and UFC fan. So this is just one of those games that I'm just intrigued by. It does actually contain real fighters as well. So uh, yeah, don't know much about it. Again, I'm not expecting it to be game of the year or anything. But this was next to nothing, so I thought I'd pick it up. Next game is Sealed. And I found it in a charity shop. Sealed games in a charity shop. This was 99p. I think it's actually I broke the seal there slightly look oh, it's worthless <laughs> that's probably my own fault from just manhandling it but yeah it's not very often you find sealed games in a charity shop so I just figured I'd pick it up stick it on the shelf send it to water be a millionaire um, and again a lot of PS3 games that I found have just straight into the CEX box but these are some of the highlights the games that will be going onto the shelf uh, Bloodstone 007, a lot of people have told me this is a good game. I've heard a lot of people say it's a bit of a hidden gem, so I'm looking forward to finding out for myself. Uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, uh, Lego Avengers, I think I own this on the Wii U, maybe even on the Xbox 360, so this might be going to CX as well, because these games always hold their value. Another Grand Theft Auto 5 Steelbook. I found one of these in my last pickups video, so I've had a couple of these now. Um, this is the PlayStation 3 one. So yeah, that will actually end up a CX2. WWE 2K15. And a game I'm going to have quite a lot to say about in a future video. So if you want to get ahead of the game, that's all I'm going to say. But yeah, WWE 2K14. Good game. PlayStation 4 now, just a couple of games. One of which I've spoken about because I've already played through it. Far Cry 5. If you've watched my last video, you'll know my thoughts on this. And I also picked up this in CEX. This was only a couple of quid. Actually, I need a big shout out to Manesh actually from this one. Um, but yeah, just a steelbook version of Deus Ex. I've never played a Deus Ex game. I'm intrigued by it. Let me know in the comments if this is something that I should jump on. A solitary Xbox One game. And again, sealed in a charity shop. I don't know why I keep finding sealed charity shop goodness. But uh, yeah, Cars. Project Cars. I think I downloaded one of these games on the Switch because it was like a really cheap, I'm talking about 50 pence cheap, and uh, I still felt like I'd been robbed. <laughs> okay, so the last part of what some might call tat, but I'm a big fan of the Xbox 360, so you won't hear that from me. And after this, we've got Super Nintendo, and then the big hitter itself. So yeah, um, picked up a few decent titles on the Xbox 360, gone, Charity Shop Fire 99p, apparently this is a good game, so I'm looking forward to giving this one a play. Um, Transformers Dark of the Moon, Need for Speed Shift, and then my friend, my Polish pal, sent me a few games across. Um, he sent me Murdered Soul Suspect, um, this big box edition. A couple of steel book football games here, Pro Evo and FIFA. Dragon Age Origins, again, in a nice sleeve cover. Battlefield 3, and there's another Grand Theft Auto 4 here, which these are always worth picking up as well. You can pick these up for a pound or so at a charity shop. I think CX are giving like a £4 trade in. It all adds up. Retro -ghetto. Okay, we made it to Super Nintendo. As you can see from the view behind me, it's my favourite console. Uh, one of these games I've already discussed on the aforementioned um, GameSmart hunting video, and that is Lethal Weapon. Riggs and Murtaugh themselves. Uh, the soundtrack is probably the best thing about this game. The opening music is, is uh, awesome. But uh, yeah, just your standard sort of platformer here. But yeah, always nice to add Super Nintendo games to the show. And uh, not in bad condition, actually. And this next game is a game that I've been after for a long time. My Super Nintendo collecting has slowed down somewhat. As you can see, I've got a lot of games. I only collect box games. Um, the games that I want are either ridiculously expensive uh, or I have them, to be honest. So I've usually got one or two games on my save searches, but I don't expect to find them. It's just sort of like as and when. And this is one of those games I had saved on my eBay for a long, long time. And there was a barren few months where there was no copies. I think there was one buy it now for like £350 or something ridiculous. And then all of a sudden, like a busters, a couple came on at once. One was complete and it was on bidding. And that's since sold for 150 I want to say. It might be wrong, but certainly over £100. And then there was this one that didn't have a manual, and it was like, buy it now, I think it was 
might have been for 35 pounds, 25 or 35. And I could see the way the bidding was going on the complete copy. And I'm not a mint collector. Obviously I'd rather have the manual. But when you're talking like a hundred pound plus difference, I thought, no, I'm just gonna go for this. And this is, the reason I bought this is it's pure nostalgia. This is like my childhood coming home from school, CITV before the sky days, right? Um, and that is the Hurricanes. I don't know if you guys remember this, but this was basically like a cartoon um, of a football team. And the music and everything was brilliant. With the Hurricanes, champion spirits, here to stay. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to edit that. Um, but yeah, the Hurricanes, man. Like I say, pure nostalgia. I've only recently got this. I've not had a chance to play it. The, the box came and it was horrible. The guy sent it in an envelope, which always pisses me off for Super Nintendo games. There was no protector on it, nothing. It was somewhat crushed. But I replaced the insert tray. I managed to take some of the stickers off. I've done all the things I needed to do to make it presentable. And it's not too bad at all now. Missing the manual, but I can live with that. Uh, because this has become a very uncommon game, I think. So yeah, really happy to add a piece of my childhood to the shelves. And uh, looking forward to giving this one a playthrough. Okay, so that's everything. Thanks for... Nah, I'm joking. Uh, I know you want to see the video game that I've spent the most money on ever. Um, you might have noticed throughout the video, there's not been any Wii U games shown. And that's because I'm going to give the Wii U its own collection update, my full set collection update. That'll be coming soon. And I've added some really, really nice titles. And I'm looking forward to sharing all that with you. But yeah, this one I wanted to show on this video because, as I say, it is the most expensive video game I've ever bought. As so often with these kind of games, there's a bit of a backstory. This is a game that's just been increasing and increasing and increasing in price. I had the chance to buy it twice. Um, a fellow YouTuber and very nice bloke offered it me a reasonable price and I passed on it because it was about worth that at the time, £90. And um, it just wasn't the right time, right? And uh, I regretted that because then the game kept going up in price and up in price. And then I saw it for sale at a shop and the guy said, for you, £90. And then a few weeks spent by and I thought, why don't I buy that? So I rang him up and I said, have you still got that game? He said, yeah. I said, can I have it? He said, no, I've taken it off the shelves because it's going crazy. Prices keep going up. I've decided I'm just going to hold on to it for a bit. So at this point, I'm thinking, man. And then I did my usual thing. As you'll probably know, you've seen on my video, I've ordered it a few times for CEX. Kept getting let down. It kept coming in stock, but it wasn't really in stock. If you haven't watched my video, go check it out. So, CX is selling this game for £140, I believe, £130, £140. And uh, obviously, I prefer to buy it that way because you can utilise the vouchers. But it just wasn't working out. So, where one came on eBay for £155, I managed to work it out with the seller. We did it for £140. Um, and that game is Phineas and Ferb, Quest for Cool Stuff. This has fast become the most sought after game on the Wii U. There's a lot of Wii U collectors. This is the one that they're after at the moment. A lot of people need this to complete the full sets. And I don't know why, but it's just become very, very expensive. I can only assume it didn't sell well. Um, what makes it a little bit better is it is minty. I hate using that term, especially with more modern games like this, because I mean, you can always switch the case out, right? But yeah, it is like new, um, which always helps when you're spending that much money. But what did help with my decision to offset this was I sold some CEX vouchers. So I sold over 100 pounds with CEX vouchers for 75% of their value. And I used that towards buying this. So it didn't feel like a 140 pound purchase. Um, you might be surprised that's the most expensive game I ever bought. It is and it isn't. It's the most money I've ever spent on one game in one go. There are some heavy hitting Super Nintendo games behind me, which if you totaled it up, I have spent more, but I bought it separately. I bought the box separate to the manual and I bought the cartridge. So there was never like one 300 pound um purchase if that makes sense so yeah 140 pound this cost me i've actually since seen one sell on ebay for 100 pounds somebody had it on 90 pound starting bid or best offer um and they accepted 100 pounds obviously i'd rather have paid 100 pound than 140 but what i would say is that the seller undervalued it or accepted the wrong offer and I think if you'd have just left it to bid in, it certainly would have gone for in and around this area. I think this game's probably worth 140, 150, but it's it's climbing all the time. Word's getting about, it's becoming quite infamous for its value now. So, like I say, because it passed me by a couple of times, we've all got those games, right, that we've got history with. 
and I've got history with this game and I just told myself next time I'm just buying it so I can just tick it off the list because uh, I couldn't let it slip through my fingers again. But yeah, Phineas and Ferb, Quest for Cool Stuff. I'm actually going to play through this because I spent so much money on it. So hopefully it's not dreadful. <laughs> I've never watched the cartoon. But uh, yeah, big, big Wii U update coming soon. And we're getting closer to that full set. And that is it. So thank you to everybody that's taken the time to watch. Uh, I've been quite a varied pickups video. I've had a lot to show. As I said, there's a lot of stuff that's gone straight to CX in the last few weeks, but um, you'll see the profits of that in my Wii U update video coming very, very soon. So if you stuck around this long, I really appreciate it. But uh, yeah, as always, play your games, keep it retro. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Retro Ghetto. <laughs>